Wild region. So last two years, I mean, we thought Brazil did great 2015. CAS come along 2016 and smash everything out. So this should be a really good first match. Yeah, we have to remember that Albus Knox did make it out of groups at Worlds, but this isn't Albus Knox that we're seeing. It's 40%. <laughs> of said team. So we'll see how the rest of the team meshes because we heard a lot of the, the guys on the desk actually bring up the fact that a lot of these players have been playing with each other for quite some time. Lex used to be on Hard mm -hmm. Random, which Smurf and Kira were both on as well. He's the bridge between now Vega Squadron that he now plays for with both Zanzara and, of course, Edward. So it's Ugh. like everyone sort of mixes in together. The CIS team probably very comfortable it, with each other. They should be very comfortable. There's a lot of confusing things, so I think we yeah. need to take people through exactly who's in this matchup. Yeah, exactly right. So before we get into the madness, let's take a look at the rosters. Introducing first from Brazil, representing Team Fire. It is, of course, Yang in the top lane from INTZ. Revolta joining him from the same team as well. We'll see whether there's a lot of top lane action with Kami from Pain Gaming in the mid lane. PBO, the rookie in the bottom lane from CMB Esports and Dude from the Red Canards in support. So you've already alluded to some of their opponents here because on the other side of the rift, it is the Commonwealth of Independence T State. It's, it's Team Ice's representatives. <laughs> it's easier to, uh, to say and see than do, but at easier this point, said, in the top lane, Smurf from Albus Knox. Luna, he of course is a world uh, quarter finalist. In the jungle, Zanzara, one of the rookies from Vega Squadron. Kira in the mid lane, also from Albus Knox. Luna uh, voted in under Gambit Gaming. Lex is now on Vega Squadron. Alongside his support, everyone will know him. It's Edward from Vega Squadron as well. Yeah, the Thresh Prince himself. So some of these guys are playing for new teams now, remember. So all-star voting was based on the teams the players were on during the last split, which is what I was talking about before, because now we've got three members of Vega, Vega Squadron, as it stands, and two members of, of course, Albus Knox Luna, that team that was doing so, so well in Worlds. Really well. Uh, I mean, we have to praise them, because I think everybody looked at that team and were like, ah, they're not getting out of that group. Unfortunately, <laughs> the, everybody put I them did. in fourth. I put them in fourth in my pickums. I was proved completely wrong, because they came out with a very solid play style, and I wonder whether it's going to be enough now for the CIS to kind of build that around Kira in the middle lane. There's the elephant in the room. We're on 623. Exactly. Uh, so we don't really know where the meta is fully settling. I still expect Kira to go on those mages in the middle lane, as Mithy was talking about earlier. Yeah, and we'll see whether Kami can actually break that up with, you know, maybe something like that Katarina that Vedius was so extraordinarily excited about. But look, was, like the last time we saw this guy play competitively was in June. <laughs> so who knows what's going to happen, to be long, perfectly honest. He could have been practicing all sorts of things. You might see a Moo Moo mid, long, which I'd be incredibly excited Long about. time ago. Here's something different to come out first. Ivan banned out because Zanzara played Ivan in the IEM qualifiers for their Season 11 performance. So one of the only junglers to play it in competitive. We're still looking at what else is here. Yeah, exactly right. And speaking of junglers, the Lee Sin going to be banned away from Revolta. Of course, his performance on that champion at Worlds was outstanding in a whole lot of his games that he was playing. And Vayne, a champion that we were actually talking about off stage is really sort of come to the forefront now, especially with the new 8% on the Blade of the Ruin King. And a lot of the changes to lethality and armor penetration, we'll get into that in the game. We may see some vein this week, but not this game. And as we head further through the pick and ban phase, attention is now being drawn to the middle lane. We've seen the Rise ban, the Karma ban, and <laughs> there's one more quick LeBlanc <laughs> to finish it out. So at Thank this goodness. point... We don't know exactly what is the highest priority pick. When you look at patches gone by, you'd be looking at an Elise or a Nidalee here, but both have snuck through. Yeah, and I'm also looking at Rengar, because Rengar is <laughs> just a little bit ridiculous. If you've got some sort of CC cleanse on a champion that was already really rough to deal with, that is a problem. But Syndra, of course, always known at being, as being incredibly strong in that mid lane ever since Worlds, is going to be snapped up very quickly by Kami. And that's the interesting thing here. With so many good junglers up, you mentioned the Rengar, the Kha'Zix, as well, we turn our attention to what has been banned out. With the Rise, the LeBlanc off the table, those are two of the champions we've yep. been hearing are very, very strong now. So for the CIS, do they look towards the jungle? In my mind, you kind of have to look towards bottom lane with the AD carries now as well, because with Vayne banned out, a lot of people are talking about how good Twitch is in solo queue. Oh, yes. There's a lot of discussion still about the Caitlyn, the Jin, and the Ezreal. That, that kind of trifecta is still potent in the bottom lane, but quite frankly, we don't know where the priority lies in competitive. Solo queue is one thing, but we have expectations and I'm seeing if they're going to be met. And the things that we've seen on streams and things like that of 6.23 Twitch is revolting. Honestly, like being able to put so many stacks of his poison on straight away, 
is just gross. And the new <laughs> camouflage mechanic with that guy is just silly. However, it is going to be Poppy and Rek'Sai locked in here for CIS's Team Ice. And this is Team Ice now going with what they know. I yeah. mean, Smurf played a lot of no Poppy in here. their wins in Worlds. He swapped over to Nah <laughs> when they didn't do quite mm. so well. But with the Poppy, Smurf looked very comf confident. And Zanzara, we know he's played a whole bunch of Rek'Sai throughout the LCL as well. So there are a lot of these picks that are just going to be comfort for the CIS. This is what I expect. May even see Kira go back to the mages, something like a Victor, something like an Anivia that can maintain at least a little bit of uh, lane presence when it comes to wave clear and won't get dominated by the Syndra too heavily early on. Yeah, and if we're talking about CIS here, we do need to talk about the elephant in the room, which is Brand, because Edward <laughs> plays it as well, everyone. I know everyone's missing Lacrit. He was the highest voted support, but unfortunately, Ooh. with both Smurf and Kira here, it is uh, impossible to have three from uh, Albus Nox Luna. So it is going to be Edward, but he does play Brand, so we should be okay. But that's a Nautilus. That is that is a Nautilus. I feel like it's going into top lane. We saw Nautilus. of the Colossus is pretty easy to proc with Nautilus, isn't it? It is. It's pretty good when you uh, can throw yourself in, get yourself surrounded. We'll touch on the courage of the Colossus Mastery later yes, on. Yes, we will. Another thing Sweet that is going to benefit everyone. pretty heavily is the fact he's so tanky, so strong, is able to just kind of maintain his way through without a hyper carry on the other side. It's fairly difficult once he gets a bunch of items to actually get taken down. And, you know, we talked a little bit about the mid lane. One of the other mages that we saw a whole lot into Syndra at Wills is that Vladin has been picked up. Yep, the very standard pick against the Syndra. The fact that you can go into a pool of blood when she uh, throws her ultimate at you does mean that it's pretty good in the situation, but it is going to be Ash picked up alongside him. <laughs> so that's one of the 80 carries that you, in fact, did not mention. You know, she's doing okay at the moment, and we'll always have that arrow to be relevant. Lex looking to stand back, start up these fights if you can with that Enchanted Crystal Arrow, get himself amongst it. So in days gone by when facing down this number of <laughs> tanks on the enemy team, normally you'd go, okay, we need a tank buster from the mid lane. Who would that be? Normally you'd look towards Azir, but he has been out of the meta for so very long. Maybe Kami didn't get that memo. I mean, I'm pretty <laughs> sure like the last champion he played competitively was Azir. Yeah, exactly, but I'm, I'm looking at the side of, of now on uh, ice, it's actually their support they're looking for. I'm sorry, it's not a mid laner at all. So we'll see where they end up going with that. This is kind of Brazil saying, let's try a lot of the newer things. Yeah. And CIS saying, let's just go comfort picks. Let's just go with a style that we know works and see how it actually works out. Yeah, and Revolt are actually going to lock in the graves here in the jungle. So a lot of extra damage coming out of there. And we'll see how the new jungle favors the man with the shotgun. And that's going to be a cow but from Be Dude picked up towards the bottom side of the map. So the Ezreal Alistair bottom lane, I'm not necessarily all that excited about it. Very difficult to kill, especially now Very that Alistair is going to have the uh, the courage of the Colossus but as I well. I like fighting all the time, dress, <laughs> and it's just not going to be a thing that's going to happen too much. No, it's not going to happen all that much. But uh, the real, real difficulty here is that if you know if Brazil get ever so slightly ahead and get a couple of items on these tanks. CIS are going to struggle because Vlad himself, not particularly great against uh, that many high health targets, likes to find a couple of squishies and then deal with the higher health targets later on. Ash is going to take a while to ramp up as well with that damage later on in the game, but the CIS going fairly standard. Brazil, a little bit more towards with what we'd expect on yeah. 623, perhaps, with all of these tanks. The, d the thing I do really, really like about the CIS's team composition, though, is the fact that they have so many options when it comes to engagements. I mean, Smurf can just go for the teleport flank to try and get himself in there, mm -hmm. but Abyssal Voyage is also available. They have the arrow, like we were alluding to before. There are a lot of ways that they can start up a fight, and we know that if the Albus Nox Luna players have had anything to do with it, that this team's very good at being coordinated, and we spoke spoken about it before. A lot of these players have history together. They could possibly get to that level here on this stage. It's always the question at All-Star, though. I know, right? <laughs> How does that coordination play into each other? We'll see. Uh, I mean, we're expecting a lot out of the, the Vega squadron bot lane now with the Tom Kench, the protective pick against that, uh, alongside that Ash. So a whole lot to learn here as we head into the first official competitive game for LOL Esports on 623. Exactly right. And speaking of LOL Esports, we want you to hop on Twitter. Use that hashtag BRWIN if you think that Brazil Brazil is going to be able to take this one, or the hashtag CIS win if you think that our Team Ice representatives are going to be able to take this one down. Remember to tweet it in at LOL Esports as well, because we are about to get into our first game on 6.23.
And I honestly don't know what to expect necessarily. <laughs> I think there's going to be a bunch of extra plants in the jungle here. We don't have the new assassins necessarily in this particular game, but we're starting off slow, ladies and gentlemen, as we hop on to the rift for game number one of IWCA 2016. <sighs> so there's a lot to talk about. Uh, mastery changes, a lot of different things that we will take you through as we go throughout the game. Of course, Alistair, for uh, those of you that yeah, has been, kind uh, of seen changed it, a little. he's been changed around, now has uh, no activatable heal. It's on his passive, so mm -hmm. it will kind of proc uh, when it's met. However, Trample was moved to his E, so a little bit more damage when it comes to like deciding to have that damage come out. And uh, that, of course, that minion pathing that uh, Trample used to allow you to have. So there's a lot of changes. We'll yep. keep up with them throughout. Allowing you to control the damage rather than control the heal is kind of cool. My personal opinion. I was recently beaten in the mid lane by an Alistair, but now Ooh, in the bottom lane, so we're fine. It was being played by Spawn. It was a horrible oh, okay. experience. That guy's very, very good at AP Alistair. So one of the first things people notice is junglers are starting on their buff camps, which is something yeah. that is different from oh, days gone by. Oh, my goodness. And does this mean something about level three after two camps? Oh, it normally does. Uh, we've seen a lot of solo queue plays where you go red, you grab the Krugs, you go into a lane. And yeah. You're level three off two camps. You can see here the lanes are going to come and help. It's only a single monster that spawns now on the buff camps. Gone are the small ones on the side, so certain junglers do end up with better clear now as well because of it. The but Cinderlings will be missed. They will. They will, but uh, and I mean, sentries as well, of course. The reason for this is they spawn a couple of seconds earlier now than the other camps as well. So yeah. there's a bigger difference. It kind of forces you onto a buff camp, and we're really going to have to learn how this affects the competitive jungle pathing because it's a significant change to the early game. Yeah, and right now, Revolti, you can see, going for that level three very early. It's going to smite away that big Krog. And the little ones just keep on coming. Yep, you see they end up spawning after, and then Revolta <laughs> is going to have to deal with this, and they keep keep on coming. So <laughs> The red buff, of course, keeping him relatively healthy, and by relatively, I mean extremely. No charges on that uh, refillable potion either, as he's going to head towards that bottom side. Pings out the ward, though. They know exactly what's going on, as we are going to poke our heads in at the Keystone Masteries. A lot of Strength of the Ages, but no Courage of the Colossus here this time around as Lex. Oh, there's the flash as Edward's in a whole host of trouble. He's going to flash, but the exhaust is already down. End of the line comes in, walks ooh, away, ooh, but ooh. doesn't get far enough. First blood for Revolta. And you can see how different this early pathing is, how strong the level three off the bottom side to get into the duo lane. Dude gets himself into the mix. They get the first kill. The answer for it by Zanzara is to go aggressive into the enemy jungle, but Revolta's going to pick the same thing up here. We'll have to watch how this now uh, evolves into a next step. Zanzara's onto the wolves, trying to take away a little bit more of that jungle. And yeah, you saw Lex actually walk in there as well. Took out the blast cone, or popcorn, <laughs> or combustion kernel, whatever you'd like to call it. I was going to call it the fire flower. Doesn't sound too bad. I feel like there's a lot of options. I mean, we've got a four day period here for IWCA. We'll be able to come up with the names that we want <laughs> for all of the plants in the jungle. And do you want to take us through stress what these plants are as we do have a replay first? Time. First of all, we'll take a, take us through the bottom side. This is just Edward getting caught out, then exhausted. And this is just the early game damage. Easy, you know, combo there. He's level three. They were <laughs> level one. He is. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> it's very, very ridiculous, Stress. One thing that I'm keeping my eyes on a little bit there that may have had an influence in the bottom side is another one of the mastery changes. We'll come back to the plants in a second. Um, mm. PBO, I wonder whether he's running Greenfather's Gift, one of the new uh, offensive masteries uh, from the middle tree, where if you stand in a bush, it ends up giving you bonus damage on your next attack and synergizes pretty well oh my uh, goodness, with Ezreal. A lot of trading heavily throughout this uh, early game. <laughs> Certainly is. And of course, Poppy versus Nautilus. It's not a matchup you expect to be super powerful as Kira takes a lot of damage from Kami here, who's playing aggressively in this mid lane. Zenzar are looking to try and capitalize on this. We'll see whether he can tunnel his way in effectively. He's going to get there. The flash knockup should be available, but no. Ghost goes down. Kami's going to be safe as Revolta turns up as well. The pings are coming in. Uh, mini wave in the right position here for CIS. Everything is going to be okay. Revolta just going to make it a little bit more difficult for Kira to farm here. Forces out of the pool, gets a little damage down, and trying to just shove the next wave in because unless Sanzara sticks around, there's no real way of Kira staying here safely. He's going to try, but his Revolta goes a little too close to the tower. Is it too but, close, or is he ooh. just sending a message? He does still have flash. If he gets a flash into the line, Kira might oh, be in trouble. Oh, no, not going to get in. 
poor Revolta. I thought that maybe that was your opportunity. He did tell me before the game that he was going to play Mundo, so he's already lied to me. And now, not even going to go in on this obvious kill. He's just toying with you. Just he toying. certainly is. Playing with my heart stress. Yeah, Revolta was not at the point for level 6. If it had that, that was pretty much an easy kill for yeah. him. But early enough that that wasn't the case. And you can see Smurf is getting pushed in fairly heavily in this early game. Uh, that's one of the strengths of Nautilus, is that Riptide, plus the ability to just trade heavily into Smurf with that shield that he's got on as well. Uh, makes it really tough for Smurf actually to kind of last through this early game. Smurf's done an okay job, but has had Sansara. Oh! Ooh. You'll have that's time to practice, practice that one, Sansara. Don't worry, we'll be all fine. <laughs> Of course, he already had the tunnel available, so maybe he was just trying to get rid of the blast cone <laughs> to make sure that Revolta didn't have too many opportunities. He's now also on his Krugs on the other side of the map. Jungle is just farming things out for the moment. Only a wolf camp available as so, far as that jungle. There is nothing else on the map apart from a dragon. That allows us to talk a little bit about the flowers, the plants yeah. that are in the jungle. Finally! So, I mean, yeah. I tried to get this ages ago. Just saw the blast cone, what happens, you stand on it and it'll kind of point you in a direction when you explode it, but you've got to line it up. You've mm -hmm. uh, got to do it, it's from where you're standing. Another one that Diud is just uh, ever so kindly timing right for us. Thank um, you very much. Is the scrying plant. What that does is gives you vision as the uh, the, the pollen sweeps up and down the rift. <laughs> now, Beautiful. that will have given away where Diud is on the map. That is one thing to, to yes. note, is the enemy team will have that indicator that somebody has popped that flower. So at that point, Dude was spotted out. Uh, but that is a significant amount of time that you get that vision for. It's 12 seconds and spots out all the wards in the way yeah, as that, well. Yeah, that's the so. thing. The fact that you get the true sight on all of the wards that are in the area is such a big deal, especially when it is around these important objectives like the Dragon, like the Baron. There are these scrying orbs put down up there. So we'll see how they are going to be utilized as the game continues at the moment. Looks like no one's heading towards that Dragon Pit, apart from Revolta, who's just hanging around, trying to get himself to his next camp, which might be in the enemy jungle. And those of you with a, an astute eye will have noticed that <laughs> Rift Herald is not spawning yet. No, he's not it there. spawns a little bit later. Harold got lazy. Yeah, a couple of changes. So uh, lots of things are a little different on the map. Little changes, but it adds up to a lot. Another change, control yeah. wards replace pink wards. Um, exactly. Pimp my pink ward, <laughs> I think is what it is. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll get onto those when there's a champion with stealth in play, but Zanzara stealthily... Oh, really, nope. really nice stun there in the knockaway from Kami. Doesn't have the ghost. Well, doesn't actually have to use the ghost more like as Kira has thrown his down. No extra damage to be taken here by Zanzara, but Yang's actually looking to get himself in there. Death charge had been leveled up, but didn't actually make it in. Decided not to use the flash or anything like that. Tried to get into the lane. We will have to watch out how Yang actually can play the rest of this game out because honestly, he's going to become such a difficult... Uh, member of the Brazilian team here to deal with because Nautilus is just has so much crowd control in the team fights is able to just hold his own bottom lane Edward in trouble again yeah another flash there as Edward is gonna make it safely out dude flashing in for the pulverize was an optimistic move unfortunately did not pay off but trading flashes on the supports is absolutely fine. Probably something that you'd wanted to hold on to, though, just being that Alistair, the fact that that flash headbutt is very important. Flash pulverize as well. Oh. Yang, this time his shield's being popped. Zanzara's oh around the back. Oh, my goodness. Good death charge Good for the double knock up. knock up as the dredge line gets Yang to relative safety. He does have the flash. He's going to use it to get himself out. Nicely done. I thought he was definitely dead because that was a very, very deep, deep gank path from Zanzara. Yeah, that was a really nice depth charge to be able to get out of that, getting that double knock up and able to get away from it. So Yang holding his own. We saw a lot of this out of Yang uh, at Worlds, just being able to kind of survive through some situations. Not in every game, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even the best top laners will tell you that it's difficult to survive 2v1s every single time. But excited to see what Yang and Revolta can do with uh, the rest of the team here. Obviously, some of their adversaries. And finally, Ooh, the Revolta honey fruit is going to show us the honey fruit. So you pop it, drop some uh, pick up like relic style things on the floor, just the fruit, the seeds. Yeah, the little fruits. You, uh, walk over them, get some health back, but it does slow you at the same time. So yeah, some you get a bit of mana as well. We'll see whether anyone's going to use it. Oh, actually, Kira's in trouble. Does get the pull off in time. Or the army was. Oh my goodness. Okay, collateral Ooh. damage not quite enough, and Kira says not even close. A baby. Single digit elf by the looks of it. So Kira just able to stay alive. Here comes the Abyssal Voyage though. Looks like they're yeah. going mid. Edward getting himself into the mid lane. He was just gone solo just to defend this turret and he's going to do so effectively as Revolta and Kami say, well, we got an ultimate. We may as well go home. 
it, it was just a defensive ultimate to hold the tower, which is very strange now because Edward's not going to have that for a while. It was timed right when Lex went back as well, so there's no way of them trying to capitalize on Kami's lane advantage in this middle lane by bringing the Tom Kench up again. So I'm interested to see how the next couple of minutes of this game is going to play out now that Edward's ult is not there. wonder whether that leaves Kira a little bit in the lurch again and, and under the pressure because he's constantly getting pushed back and constantly low health under turret. Yeah, it certainly is. If you have a look at the CS numbers as well, you can see about a 10 CS lead for PBO oh, yeah, here. For PBO. The rookie. Sounds There's here. the arrow. Good arcane shift, but it's just a little bit too late as he takes the CC with him. Heal goes out. Good. Flash gets himself over the wall. Oh my goodness! The Prey Seeker finds him. And Zentara grabs the first kill for CIS. All from Diu not being in the lane there to play defensively with him. PBO was pushed way too far up, and yes, okay, Arcane Shift will get you out of most things, but the, because it's a blink, the, the stun ends up yeah. channeling afterwards, so hits him and doesn't quite dodge out of the way, so a little unfortunate for PBO, couldn't get himself out of the way in time. Yeah, Revolta is going to be able to pick up this farm here underneath the turret. Diu's going to turn up, but let's have a look at that one one more time. As it's just a little late. So he input the arcane shift, but got caught just before he ended up going. And Prey Seeker into somewhat the shadows. Yeah, to pick so up the kill. Hectic Prey Seeker damage there as well. It's good stun once again from Kami. Dredge line is dodged by the pool. Kira once again just getting himself out of the way of trouble. Is going to be fine. Mountain Drake now being taken by Team Ice. It's CAS utilizing the fact that PBO is no longer there. Only just turned up back to the bottom side. Dude can use that scrying. Oh, decides to use it backwards. <laughs> Odd maneuver. They just knew that that was happening. Didn't need to. Botany to can be difficult. Coming. Very true. Um, you've got to talk to your plants, take care <laughs> of them, you know, play the music. He's not necessarily a green thumb, I think. <laughs> we'll see who's the best gardeners on the rift as we play out this patch. Further on in the week is Yang, of course. We did see the interaction between Steadfast Presence and Dredge Line. It's kind of cute. In fact, Yang can't get himself all the way towards the poppy. Speaking of poppy, Smurf going to grab himself a whole bunch of honey fruit, get himself back a bunch of mana. Should be absolutely fine. True Shot Barrage, PBO just clearing out the minion wave. Is still ahead in farm by 10, but Lex now has those Berserker's Greaves building towards his Infinity Edge. Getting stronger and stronger is this Ash. Yeah, going for that Infinity Edge first. A lot of uh, a lot of the AD carries have started to do this a lot more. Dude's mad. <laughs> he is. Whole race is grand. A lot of AD carries started to do this a lot more during uh, during worlds where you know a long time we were going kind of BF sword into hurricane as a mm -hmm. lot of AD carries did end up just going infinity edge first. So uh, interesting to see whether that maintains itself. There were changes to some of the AD carry items and you know the way lethality and armor penetration work and the way the fury of ba fury of battle was changed. So. When we see some more of the matchups that were affected by that, perhaps we'll, we'll get a little deeper into that. But certainly, there are a couple of AD carries that people feel like have fallen off somewhat. Jin would be the one of them. Yep. And uh, Lucian, because the Fuhrer of, uh, of the battle changes. Maybe not going to be seen quite so much. Well, I'm not that we saw him much anyway before. Yeah, I quite yeah. like Lucian. I think he's pretty good. But we'll see what is going to happen. I just want to see a Dusk Blade of Drakthar Vayne. That's what I really <laughs> want to see. Uh, we can do some Vayne spotting. Yeah. That'll be good. Getting into that brush, getting that extra damage now on that item. Do so you think it's very, very cute? The fact that you get the tumble as well. If you tumble into the brush, oh my goodness. All Disgusting. of that burst damage. Right. We'll see. Of course, not going to happen this game. As we are going to see another steal by Zanzara. Yang's actually going to move his way in, but not going to get there in time. Dredge line not going to be thrown out. Scrying plant is going to see Smurf. I feel like we've Scry had... Bloom, of course, is what it's called. I feel like we've had more camp steals <laughs> than we've actually had. Yeah, I feel uh, like it's just... No, no, no. We ha we just split the rift the wrong yeah. way. It's now... <laughs> you've got bottom side is just the bottom lane. And so that's going to be Fire's side, or Brazil's <laughs> side. And then CIS have the top side of the map. Yeah, there's been a lot of action in each other's jungle right now, but you can see how the vision game is being played out with the Scryer's Bloom, with the control wards that have been bought and placed. There was at one point where the Brazilian team had four control wards. Yeah. And uh, had them all down, so a little bit of a lull in the action, but that's kind of to be expected now as we've got an Ezreal that's powering up, an Ash that's powering up, tanks getting tanky in the top side, and then a mid lane where nobody's really killing each other without a gank. Yeah. Kami as well, of course, just throwing out the orbs that are going to stick around for quite some time, given the fact that he has got five points in that queue already. 
So he's able to stack up a whole host. We'll see whether that Unleashed Power is going to be able to get himself a kill because it's not looking like it is against Kira. He will have to move himself away. Yang, lots of damage here. Just fighting in these Titan's Wrath windows is so important for Nautilus and it's working out very, very well when he is able to do so as a visible voyage. Edward's looking for a gank here in the mid lane. Kira gets the flash. Kami's going to flash away. Does have the ghost running. His Hemo Plague's going to come down. Good slow comes oh, in. Oh, running into Lex. Yeah, can he get himself out of the way? He doesn't have the flash. No stun comes in as Kira's going to get the kill. And Edward's going to stop Lex from falling down. Meanwhile, yes, yeah, Smurf's in trouble. Collateral damage is there. Red buff. Oh, oh my oh. god. Picks it up with a smoke screen. When was the last time you saw that? 6.23 smoke screen. You now get killed. <laughs> Fantastic. Just that last little bit of health. Finally, a little more action. As, uh, you know, we saw the mid lane focus being put on Kami. Topside has been more of the focus over the last couple of minutes for uh, Revolta and Yang. But... Dude and PBO, they're looking like they want to back away from this tower. The tower race is on, and I think it's going over on the top side. I think barely Brazil will get this. Yeah, Yang gets a couple of autos. Able to reset Ooh. that one with his Titan's Wrath, and that secures it. That was extraordinarily close. Means now Brazil out to about a thousand gold lead. That is nothing here. 16 minutes into the game. This could not be closer for our first match of IWCA. Yeah, so this was the attempt on Takami. This is what we were talking about earlier, being able to kind of combo with that Abyssal Voyage, bring multiple people into that middle lane. And Kami thought he was dodging out, but Lex oh, yeah. fire flowers himself over and gives yep. Kira the kill. So a nice little situation to use that in. Yeah, Popcorn's his way into the action. As there's the flash smoke screen. Oh, baby. <laughs> Uh, would you call that a flashbang? Yes, absolutely. Just stunning. He's got a big gun as well. It makes sense. Stress, you are, you're good at this. Very good at this. I mean, it's more that it can't really be a smoke screen, right? Because you can't have that yeah. point. So no. Poppy ends up falling. Tower dies in top side. Kami and Kira still trading in the middle lane. This has been a relentless game of trading. Most certainly has been, as Kira does have his proto belt completed, but no Spirit Visage. In fact, only the Mercury Shreds as far as that magic resist. I would have liked to see something like a, uh, at least a Spectre's Cow built up early, but not going to. Just going to skip that one for the moment, as Kira's going to get stunned. Trying to turn it around here as well as the pool comes out. Good Abyssal Voyage gets Edward in. As oh, there's the collateral damage for the kill on the mid laner, and can't... Kira was trying to turn it around. Brazil was just too quick. And this time you can see Brazil are just holding this mid lane and pushing out top side as well. Smurf is trying to push out on the bottom side. So again, Brazil this time preempt the play from Edward. They're looking at the map and saying, okay, where can this play actually come? It's going to be mid lane. And the ability to just survive through that goes pretty heavily in Brazil's favor. This time you got that Scryer's Bloom. Dragon's dropping pretty low. Oh, Edward's in trouble here. We'll see whether they're going to sacrifice him. They are going to do so. Zenzara grabs himself the dragon. In goes Yang. The shutdown comes in as Lex is being exhausted. He's going to fall down. Two members dead already as PBO just gets into the dragon pit. Everyone on this side is tearing through the CIS as Smurf is now the last man standing in this particular engage. Edward just watching from the sidelines as the big tank poppy eventually falls down. Welcome to the League of Tanks again. If you don't have the damage <laughs> this point, it's so difficult to actually deal with him. Kira, still full health, but that's a lot of damage coming in onto him now. Yeah, dude, didn't actually quite find the Pulverize as Kira's able to use the Proto Belt to get himself out. The Ghost was used as well, didn't have the Flash, but that's gonna mean the Tower for Brazil. They are able to easily take that one down. Yeah, tower drops bot side now. Kami is pushing up as well. So this is going so well. And considering just how many of our analysts were talking uh, <laughs> about how strong the CIS region were, you can see that they are, maybe are even slightly behind the curve on their, their champion picks here when we look at what they're playing because these tanks are so difficult for them to deal with here. Lex comes forward into the fight and doesn't realize Yang's about to just turn on him. Yang alone deals at least half of his health there for Lex. It's just a little cleanup from the rest of, uh, you know, PBO and Dude to get into that fight. From here, Smurf 1v3 is not going to happen because he just doesn't have the damage. So PBO is just going to whittle him down over time. And it's an easy setup because there's just not enough damage out of the CIS team to allow Team Ice to stay alive in this. Yeah, and it's just a horrible situation to be in as well because that's Nautilus Alistar. I mean, there, there are no, there's no combination of two champions that has more CC than that. 
And you saw, he was just in a bouncy castle and then he was just being <laughs> corralled. Just horrible for the Poppy to do it towards the end there. But we'll see whether now I saw oh, the sneak. Oh, oh Ed, that's cute. It's cute, but it should have been a three. It, it certainly been three. Edward should have. Down. I like the idea. And this is something synonymous with what the CIS region were doing <laughs> at Worlds, because this is what Albus Knox did time and time again. Brazil have no idea. They, as good as their champion picks were, their ability to register that Baron was oh being taken because goodness. of the, the Fire Flower at the back. That's the CIS region right back in this game. Right in a nutshell as well. It's just exactly what they were doing all throughout Worlds. Doesn't matter, Lecrit not there, Edward is. Didn't get himself <laughs> over the wall, but just uses his ultimate. Absolutely fine. Is Kira not going to get stunned? And Kami's just like, why are these minions purple? Is this another patch change? What's happening? <laughs> uh, well, that's another thing to watch out for. I mean, I'm sure people have had that in solo queue. Arrow Ooh. doesn't find Kami, who's safely underneath his turret for now. Clears out these minions. She is certainly able to do, even with that Baron buff active, Syndra does have a fair bit of wave clear, especially now with that Morella Nomicon. And that was a Baron right after it spawned. Yeah, that we was were on the spawn. 2020 at that point. Um, and a clear sight on uh, CIS being able to pick that up because that was a really fresh move in the first first game on 623 we've really had in, uh, you know, they started it moving pretty quickly. We'll see whether any of our other RWCA teams are now just going to be either warding for that very <laughs> aggressively yeah. or trying to do it themselves. This could be a new thing. Gets the plant spawn behind there, the yeah. favorable spawn. Now everybody's going to be like, dude, why do I want to see why the sick no Baron pl power play for this as well, because I have a feeling, well, at the moment, it's, it's going to be pretty low that right huge. <laughs> exactly. Um, only because they aren't able to push towers out. But what this does do is slow down the Brazilian team, Team Fire, the representatives on the blue side. So it's slowing them down. It's really now kind of working against Yang. There's no no real way of him pushing out quite as effectively. Riptide plus the uh, the Titan's Wrath, the shield damage. Sunfire Cape, much he's got all that. magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is literally all magic. Apart from, you know, smacking his anchor and stuff. As oh. is gonna get stunned, but just flat out does not care about it. Especially with the Merc Treads. And a wave once again getting shoved in. But look, this tower is so, so healthy. The CIS just can't really make any headway. Smurf is going to make some uh, some tracks here towards the bottom lane. But Yang will turn up. Should be able to help this one out. At least with what clear he has against these uh, Baron Up minions. See how bad it is, Stress. We'll see how bad it is indeed. I'm being told that the CB LOL representatives have done twice the amount of damage as the CIS representatives oh in this goodness. game. Um, we'll see whether that maintains itself, because if CIS get to a point where they're killing the Brazilian tanks over and over again, that damage stat later on is going to ramp pretty far up, because... Uh, yeah, and if you look at these team compositions as well, I mean, CIS did build a team around late-game damage, late-game yeah. control as well, and things like the Vladimir and the Ash, as well as that Poppy. And uh, Fire, they've got a Graves. He does so much early game damage, as well as the Syndrome. <laughs> and even Nautilus does a surprising amount <laughs> yeah, of damage very as well. true. Um, I mean, when you look at lane trading, there's actually not that much damage. When you look at it in raw numbers, it's more of percentages when you look at top lane dominant champions yep. early on. Um, but by the end of the game, it kind of tapers off and looks like a really insignificant stat. Mm. But at that point, we'll, uh, we'll keep a track of the damage as we go on. But Exactly. You did see the fact that Yang just doesn't care about anything on the bottom side of the map at the moment with his double armor items as well as the six stacks on his Dark Seal, giving him that little bit of extra damage. Just a um, touch extra. Yeah, they're just throwing stuff at each other. I mean, realistically, Yang will never have those stacks drop off. Yeah. Yang should never <laughs> die for the rest of this game if he's playing, you know, in a situation where he's not overextending on his own. Uh, so that should be fairly straightforward. And as Dragon spawns, Revolt is on the other side of the map. So this is going to be a, a third Mountain Drake going over to the CIS squad. So if ever they do get in front of the Baron again, yeah, it's going to die really quickly, or even behind Baron again. Well, Scryer's Bloom is going to be used, but you can see Yang, he's just going to go back to base. So yeah, Triple out Mountain is going to be picked up by CIS, the team that just wants to kill neutral objectives. We'll we know that. We can get that. Yeah. <laughs> this one's going to be respawning in a very short time, and by this one I mean the Baron. So, a lot of people are going to say, hey, we had an Assassin update. 
why are we not seeing assassins? Well, this is one of the reasons, is because with the amount of, um, the amount of tanks and courage of the Colossus, yeah. and no real negative change to the Syndras, the Vlads, the Victors, where they still can be picked, you have to win the game in the first like 15 to 20 minutes so heavily that this can't happen where the game gets stalled for a, an assassin to consistently be viable. And on, honestly, people have got too good at this point of stalling out games that it's such a difficult prospect. You have to remember as well as that learning curve is a big deal when things are changed like this. A lot of players take a quite a long time to figure out exactly what's going on as Yang's gonna flash and rend you Staggering a dome blows. and Edward to try and get him down here. A lot of damage available. End of the line's gonna do it as Revolta grabs himself another kill. But Kira, he's gonna turn it around there in the mid lane. He's running real quick and he's able to get away with that kill on a PBO. Uh, Fed Nautilus is a bit of a silly champion. Oh, yes. Um, because you can't get away from him particularly easy, and you can't kill him at the same time, so you don't really have too much of a choice. Stress, he has CC on his passive. Yes, it's great. That's and not very passive. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> it's bothersome. The Smurf and Zanzara are able to get themselves out of the way of any potential sticky situations. Is Kami in trouble? Kira, a couple of moves, is able to do some work. He's now underneath the turret, but has that pool available. Of course, he's going to be fine. Has a giggle, walks back to the tower. Oh, teleport coming in, though, from Yang. We'll see whether he can get right onto Kira oh, next. real good dredge line. Should it be enough? It is, as Kami grabs it with an auto attack. Zanzara right in the back line, as well as Revolt is in trouble. There's the redemp... Sorry. Not even... My brain just broke because there's a brand new item here <laughs> that we've started things off with. I believe it's redemption, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, redemption. Oh you are, you I are was correct. Right. And I, then it's you just started. like, there's this huge circle, and I'm like, oh, God, it's so exciting and glorious. You started, and I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. go for it. Yeah, no, it's, it's the first uh, time, man. Oh, it's a redemption. Oh, oh that shield. As, yeah, Edward is going to get destroyed. Revolta locks down that, down that kill, and now Lex waiting at the back, but he's only on half health. The tower falls down very quickly in Brazil. Pushing forward once again. This inhibitor turret possibly in trouble. They don't have mountain drakes, but they can just kill the CIS players and get under these turrets themselves. Dredgeline comes in. Oh my goodness, this Smurf. This is disgusting. Yeah, tanks Yang just everything. doesn't die. Oh goodness, Lex did manage to land the arrow at least, but Zanzara now trying to get himself into the back line. PBO is going to fall. And that is the AD carry, so a lot of consistent damage now missing. Revolts are the only other option is. Yang just fed to the walls. Is he gonna die? <laughs> okay, he is, eventually. Lex takes him down, but that took a long time. That was ridiculous, but at this point, this actually backfires from how far up Brazil pushed, because now CIS, with their three Mountain Drakes, mm -hmm. can turn to the Baron for the second time in this game. And to explain a little bit of, of what happened there and why people are looking at that and thinking, well, why didn't Yang die for so long? I can confirm they are running Courage of the Colossus. Our graphic earlier showed a little bit ah, different. Okay. Uh, it is Courage of the Colossus that is being played, and what that means is that every time Yang like hits a hook and drags himself into multiple people, he gets a percentage health-based shield depending on how many enemies are around him. So between that and Titan's Wrath, he gets over half of his health of a shield. And we're going to probably watch some of that happen again. So this is the initial play on between Kami and Kira that kind of kicked things off from It was an moment. odd move by Kira, to be honest. It was. So at this point, here comes the teleport in from Yang. That's already part of uh, the Courage of the Colossus plus the shield he gets. And Yang looks like he has about 4,000 health at least at, at that point. And there's the redemption going off. You'll that was where my brain everyone, exploded, uh, yep. We'll get used to seeing that, whether you're playing against <laughs> it or uh, or with it. Got to stand in that if you're with it. Yep. And this is where it goes a little bit wrong for the, the CBLOL representatives, because they go aggressive, they look for that first tower, and this is actually a good play here, because they can get this tower back themselves away, but they get a little over-aggressive here. Yang tanks up the tower for a moment or two too long, and they don't really respect the damage that's going to come. Now that the minions are, are gone from in front of the tower as well, Yang just continues to tank it up. Ash Arrow damages three, stuns Revolta, and Zanzara has a fair amount of damage himself, has that Titanic Hydra, gets himself into the mix, and they leave Yang for the wolves, but it takes a long, long time to kill him. Yeah, if this is an example of things to come, that Nautilus is most certainly going to be a difficult one to take down. Now has himself a Spectre's Cal, as him and Smurf are fighting. But they're like, it's like two titans. It's taking a very, very long time to do very much damage between these two guys. And they're very, very close as far as farm is concerned. 
That being said, Smurf not quite with the kills that Yang's been able to pick up. 2-1 and 5 now for the Nautilus, looking very, very good. One thing I do want to say is that PBO tanked three turret shots, unfortunately, in that last <laughs> engage. So maybe we would have had a better time if that had an only the case for Revolta. Yeah, he's going to get caught out by the arrow. Hemo plagues down. Oh my goodness, he is going to explode the redemption. Once again, doing some work. Heals up, dude, and does a bit of damage Yang's to the team members as Yang gets himself into the back line. But is he a little bit too late? Good knock up. As the Great Health's eaten by Edward to keep himself up. Yang is just getting chipped down over and over. Has to flash to get himself out as the ultimate is used by a Smurf to break up this fight. PBO probably happy to get to relative safety. The CIS very low. And are able to win out in the battle as Revolta, the only casualty. And now this is one of the differences uh, and the difficulties of playing a full tank setup is if you do end up falling behind, you have fairly limited damage. You have a Syndra, you have an Ezreal to provide damage with the Graves as well, yeah. but when one of those pieces falls, very, very difficult to play a multi-tank setup. So Revolta was the one that got caught by the arrow initially, ends up falling to the Hemo Plague. The Redemption was a moment too late. Kira actually getting pushed back away from the fight and oh, then swallowed up by cute. Edward. Edward was waiting for him anyway, so they would have been able to keep him safe. But PBO is the one that is having to deal the damage with Kami here in this fight for the most part. And it's his back and forth. The CIS region don't really feel like sticking around, and then they get themselves out too. So uh, a bit of a back and forth fight. But while the Baron buff's still active, the CIS region are going to continue to look to push. Well, we'll see whether they can actually find it here as they just always seem to have a Baron buff rotating around them post 20 minutes. It's just a thing that these guys are capable of as Lex grabs himself the blue buff. Smurf and Kira just say that they don't really need it. And this top wave going to be indicated too just because they want to get things pushing up and get some control back. Because Brazil, they were looking so dominant. They were winning yeah. these team fights over and over again. But CIS, with now three dragons, if they can get that push working out for them, and if they can get control, dodge out of the way of these good engages that Yang's been able to get, they are looking absolutely fine. And the scaling might be now coming into play. Oh, it, it definitely is coming into play now for the CIS region. But I mean, we look at how this game played out for, for Brazil. The moment that it goes wrong is when CIS jump over the back of Baron 20 minutes yeah. into the game <laughs> using the, uh, the, the fire plant and they get themselves in, take out the Baron for the first time. Now they have three Mountain Drakes, the second Baron. It has turned the game completely around in their favor. And the tanks are great if they're in team fights and if the damage from the CIS team falls at the same time. But if you can't get onto the back line, can't get the damage down too, it becomes all too tricky a composition. Yeah, the consistent damage now coming out of Lex is also huge. Has his Mortal Reminder completed as well as the Renan's Hurricane and the Infinity Edge. Now with the cheeky Hex Drinker there as well, just to make sure that Kami can't explode him. So the Ash, well and truly in control. He's been landing the arrows, doing exactly what he needs to do. This is what we're talking about. I mean, Edward and Lex have been laning together for at least a little while. And Lex has been playing with Smurf and Kira before. I mean, he was on hard random. This is Kira's going in. Kira, yeah, looking for a big old dive. As Kami takes a fair bit of damage from the Hemo Plague, down to about half health redemption. Trying to keep Brazil alive as Kira uses the Zonyas before the pull. To, oh my Ooh. god, that burst damage was huge as Revolt is able to take him down. Now Brazil looking to turn things on its head as Smurf's in trouble, but he's happy to tank up a lot of damage. Now going to be flashing out of the way. Brazil still on the offensive as he blasts his way over. Smurf, he's out, dude, getting himself in, but... That Pulverize is just not good enough if there is a consume available. Lex almost able to take him down. The Ignite, is it going to be enough? It is as Edward grabs himself the kill. His signature summon is well, PBO. doing some work as Zara now in the back line. PBO in trouble. He gets bonked into the wall and destroyed as Zanzara grabs that kill. Kami in trouble as Edward's just licking his face. But he's going to be able to make it to relative safety. Revolta overextending himself. And Zanzara is so incredibly tanky. Another wall bang, and Yang, he's going to find himself dead. And somehow it's all completely turned on its head, and CIS only lose one. It's all from the target selection. They ignored Yang for so long, drew him away from PBO, and Zanzara and Smurf took the opportunity to strike and take away the damage. First they took out PBO, then they got Revolta, and Kami was fleeing for his life, and that left Yang to pretty much fend for himself, and he's easily picked off if it's only a tank on his own against four people, so this is where it runs out. If the damage is gone, there is no real way for the tanks to do too much on their own, and we're into a situation where it wasn't enough to end the game, but the CIS region will look for their third 
Baron once they are back alive. And this was Kira going way too deep at first because he looks to try and pick off Kami, gets good damage down, but does not respect the crowd control as he comes out of the Zonya's Hourglass, does not respect the damage. And that's where it looks good again for the CBLOL representatives. But keep your eyes on the distance between Yang and PBO for this fight. Dude is the front line, leading them through for the majority of this. So he ends up taking so much damage, combos onto Lex, and that's the Tom Ken strength, is Lex is safe for the entirety. Dude, at this point, is unable to do anything. Without a heal on his kit, the Ignite is enough to take him down, and Yang and PBO were too far away from each other, and Zanzara got the flash in, and Kami's dead. Yeah, <laughs> he most certainly is. Not entirely sure how, but the mid laner for Team Fire is now in the death chamber, and that is going to spell surprise. Yet another Baron here for CIS. How many Barons is that now? That is number three at 35 That's minutes. Ludicrous. Is that like on spawn almost every single time? Yes, it actually was. Yeah. Um, I believe we didn't quite see the timer on this one, but I'm I would I would say so. I I'm, I think it's pretty much there. I mean, what is like 15 minutes? From I'm 20 minutes, I'm pretty sorry. sure 7, 7, 14, it's very, very close it's to close. on spawn. If you give them some time to actually take the dang thing. <laughs> well, Yang's still recalling bot side. This is going to be a, a fairly easy push up for now. Well, Zanzara and Smurf, so incredibly tanky. They probably don't really care about this turret. As another minion wave's going to push through, Kira, another proto belt very aggressively as he just walks past the dredge line. He's got the pool, he's got the Zonyas, and he's going to be able to keep himself up. Redemption now right in the back line of this fight as Ice do take a fair bit of damage from it, keeping up these Brazilian Maybe players. Safe, but my god, look at how tanky they are, Kira. Yet another pool in this fight as the inhibitor does fall down. PBO has taken down Zanzara. As Kira, he's still alive. Dude's going to fall. Lex, just so much consistent damage. Look at the health bars, they're so low! As the Ash is just huge! And the minions are tearing apart this base. Open Nexus now! As CIS are looking to make a statement in game number one of IWCA. Oof, a very tense fight to end the game. Gives the CIS region a good end. Oh, yeah, good post 20 minute victory on that. After one. doing half the damage of Brazil for what was it, the first 15 minutes of the game? Whew. Just well, insane. We saw a lot of answers to what people said was strong. People said Courage of the Colossus is strong, and we saw it certainly is. But yeah. <laughs> if you uh, don't have quite enough protection on some of your damage, if you don't, you know, balance the team fight quite properly. It's so difficult to actually have that many tanky champions and not end up falling. I mean, the Vlad outscales in the end, the Ash damage in the end is pretty significant too. Yep, you can see Lex on your screen right now. The guy looks very, very happy to be back at an IWCA. I remember him, uh, IWCA 2015 in Melbourne, Australia. The guy played extraordinarily well. In fact, CIS were the 1v1 gods. Kira, of course, coming out on top of that one like you guys all know. And we saw Kira was just having a great time on his Vladimir. <laughs> and we were talking about meta and things like that. The band certainly changed, but the picks are looking just so, so similar. What with, I mean, even the Nautilus pick, I see a lot of Amazing J, and that guy plays a lot of <laughs> Nautilus regardless of what the meta dictates. So well, it's just, it's looking pretty comfortable, and we'll see who's going to be the first team out of these IWCA teams that is going to sort of push the envelope and change things up try and get us into new territory. Well, we had some new territory trodden by the Brazilian team, but it wasn't quite enough to, to maintain their lead in that game. But we had a, a lot of questions answered. The mid lane meta still is going to revolve yep. somewhat around Syndra and Vlad for now. And as you said, Kira, not really too phased by that. No. Uh, he'll take playing Vlad any day of the week. Uh, we saw some pretty good coordination out of the CIS squad. Um, the Baron attempts, the, Baron the attempt Tom Kench attempts yeah. into mid lane, so certainly looking pretty good as a unit. Yeah, I certainly liked it, and we'll see whether we're going to catch more of that action from them, because at the moment, I mean, this is the only Summoner's Rift game they're going to play in the first three days. We're going to see Assassin mode, we're going to see All for One. The coordination in those particular modes could be something that's... Uh, we don't even necessarily <laughs> understand. I'm excited about it. But for more on that win, Hingers is standing by with Kira from Team Ice.
Thank you, gentlemen. I'm joined now by Kira from Team Ice. Congratulations on the win. Uh, how did you feel about that game? Were you guys confident going in? Because obviously Brazil and, say, yes, traditional powerhouses of IWC. Yeah, I thought that we will lose this game because <laughs> I didn't believe in myself. Last time when I played Vladimir vs. Syndra, I was 0-8-0. And this game, uh, Edward told me that if I will not die one versus one, he will buy me a belt. Oh. Yeah, so Gambit player, belt, you know. Uh, do you need a new belt? Of course. Right, okay. Um, so uh, what kind of belt are you going to grab then, do you reckon? Uh, that size my, uh, like, uh, <laughs> stomach. All right, cool. Um, so next up, you're going to be playing Assassin's Mode. Are you looking forward to that? What are you, what, can you give us a bit of a sneak peek on uh, what you're going to be uh, taking into that game? Uh, I don't know would be there draft phase like bands. Mm -hmm. If not, uh, everyone in our team will uh, fast click LeBron. <laughs> and if uh, who will take it, uh, others would be, oh my god, I need to play someone else. <laughs> so yeah. Excellent stuff. Um, and, and finally, uh, obviously a lot of preseason patch changes coming in uh, to uh, this tournament. This is kind of the first time a lot of people are seeing these patch uh, changes played uh, in competitive.